We're going over how to find the expected value with the TI-8384 calculator. Expected value is another way of saying mean or average. And these calculators do this quite well. Okay. Now, both calculators are going to look the same. This is an older 84 and it operates just like the TI-83s do. Everything looks the same between 83 and this. This is a newer 84. All the newer 84s will look like this one. Okay, I'm going to go through them both at the same time because the, there's very little difference between the two of them. First, we need to get our data in there, and I was an idiot and made this way too big, so I'm going to have to squeeze everything down here, but it should be fine. Okay, first what we do is we press stat, hit enter, and there's numbers in here, and on both calculators, I'm going to have numbers. Well, this one's cleared. I don't really use this one except for videos. This one gets used for other things. Um, so to clear them, you put the cursor up the top, on the L1, you hit clear and down. Same thing on L2, you hit clear and down. You don't want to delete one because if you press delete, you delete the L2. To get it back, you press stat, go down to number 5 down here, setup editor, press enter twice, and now when you press stat and hit enter, it's back. So you can put them back pretty simply, and it works the same on this one. I'm going to use this one because of the bigger screen. It's going to show up a little bit better on video, so I'll default to this one in most cases. Now let's type it in, one, two, three, four, one, enter, two, three, four. Oh, and it helps if you actually type what you're saying instead of four plus. Over here in L2, we're going to type in the 0.15, the 0.25, the 0.35, the 0.25. So I have those numbers in there. I'm going to go ahead and work with this one. One, two, three, four. Over here, 0 0.15, 0 0.25, not negative, 0.35, and 0.25. All right, now the button pushes are the same for the most part. It will look a little bit different between the two calculators on the old one and new one, irregardless of which one we're working with first. What we're going to do next, well, data entry. Let's write this down. To put the data in, you press stat and hit enter. And that you put this column in L1, you put this column in L2. Okay. Then what you're going to do is press the stat button. You go over to calc, and we want one of our stats which is the first one. So we're going to press stat over to calc. See, it says one of our stats, press enter. Now the older 84 is going to look different than this. So let me show you. We press stat over to calc, press enter and see it looks different. Okay. On the old 84, it was kind of programmed by a computer programming scientist who thought differently than regular humans. And what you have to do is you have to tell the command where the data is. You have to write L1 comma L2. You have to manually type it, which isn't that hard to do. You hit second up here and then button one down here. The comma is right above the seven. You hit second and two. So it should say one of our stats, L1 comma L2, press enter. And it gives you a big list of stuff. Okay. Over here, on the new one, it says one of our stats at the top. It says list, and it defaults to L1. This should always say L1. But the frequency list won't say anything. When the calculator gets reset, that gets cleared. So what you're going to have to do is come down here and put second two. Okay? On the TI 30s and 36s, it has a menu list, and you just pick out the one you want. Here it doesn't. So you hit second two. Okay, so you put L2 there, which is second two. And then you hit calculate. And if you caught it real quickly, it flashes what this one had on the screen for a moment. Okay, now you can tell they're both giving me the same things. This one's actually a little quicker than this one. Sometimes the new one's quicker, sometimes the old one's quicker. It depends on what you're doing. Our expected value is X bar is 2.7. Okay, the standard deviation is sigma x. If you scroll down, you have the five number summary, which would be pretty useless for this particular problem I'm working. But anyhow, our standard deviation is basically one. All right, let's do a kind of a real life application of this. I'll go ahead and use the pretty calculator for this one. Okay, 
Now for real life applications you have to draw out the table first. You're, you're not given the table. And it, like always these documents in the videos are in the video description. There's a link to them so you can open this up, print it, and work with me. A lottery has a grand prize of 1,000, three second prizes 200, six consolation prizes of 15. If 100 tickets are sold at a price of $2 each, find the expected value of this lottery if you purchase one ticket. Okay, so I'm going to have to set up a table. I'm going to do event x and p of x. Okay, I need this table. Now the reason I'm setting this table up this way is I have a lottery problem and I have money. I put my money in the X column, okay? And the money isn't always associated with the outcome, so I like to have an outcome column as well. All right, now we read it. It has a grand prize of 1,000, so I'm going to put grand prize here, and I'm going to put 1,000 here. And I didn't leave enough room, so I'm writing kind of small. Uh, three second prizes of 200. Six consolation prizes of 15. And then again, there's always losers in every lottery. They're sold at $2 each, so I have to subtract two from everything. Okay. Now, and they sold 100 tickets, so grand prize would be one out of 100. There were three second prizes, so this is three out of 100. There are six consolations, so this is six out of 100. And one plus three plus six is 10, so that means there's 90 losers out of 100. So I have that set up. What I'm going to do now is put this in my calculator. So I'm going to press stat and hit enter. And I'm going to type the x values in here. I'm going to type 1000 minus 2. I'm going to type 200 minus 2. You can do the math here. You don't have to do it beforehand. That's what the calculator's job is. 15 minus 2 and then minus 2. And then I'm going to come over here and type 1 out of 100, 3 divided by 100, 6 divided by 100, and then 90 divided by 100. Okay? Everyone follow what I've done there? Good. Now I'm going to do the one bar stat thing again. I press stat over to calc, press enter. It's L1 comma L2 on the old ones. I hit calculate and I get X bar is 14.9. That's positive. It means I want to play that game. That's wonderful. I'm going to win money. Okay. Now, how do I figure out how much I should charge for the game to be fair? Well, what we do, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. My X column, I'm just going to make it 1,000, 200, 15, and 0. We're going to leave this 1 out of 100. 3 out of 100, 6 out of 100, and 90 out of 100, okay, for my P. So I'm just going to press stat, hit enter. I'm going to come over here and change this to 1,000, 200, 15, and 0. And then I'm going to do this uh, stat over to, oops, I hit the wrong button. Stat over to calc, one of our stats, L1, comma L2 for the old 84s. Now I get 16.9 this time. That's how much I should charge for the game to be fair. If I charge 16.9 for the game, my expected value will come out to zero. And to verify this, I can press stat, hit enter. I can do 1,000 minus 16.9, 200 minus 16.9, 15 minus 16.9, and then six negative sixteen point negative sixteen point nine because we had to pay that to play the game and apparently I hit the wrong minus sign there which I did make sure you hit this minus sign not that one and then I press stat over to count press enter you do the L1 comma L2 on the old 84 again and I get pretty close to zero I had to have mistyped something, but it gives the expected value zero. The other way to do it is we pay $2 to play this game. You just add two to the expected value, okay, if it's positive, and that's the price you pay. Well, hopefully you find that helpful, and it gets you a better grade. Have a good one.